They met me in the day of success, and I have learned by the perfectest report they have more in them than mortal knowledge. When I burned in desire to question them further, they made themselves heir, into which they vanished. Whilst I stood ramped in the wonder of it, came missives from the king, who all hailed me Thane of Cotter, by which title before these weird sisters saluted me, and referred to me to the coming on of time, with Hail King that shalt be. This have I thought good to deliver thee, my dearest partner of greatness, that thou mightest not lose the dues of rejoicing by being ignorant of what greatness has promised thee. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Glamest thou art, and cotter, and shalt be, what thou art promised, yet do I fear thy nature? Is it too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way? Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What thou wouldst highly, and that wouldst thou hollowly, wouldst not play false, and yet wouldst wrongly win. Thou'st have, great glamis, that which cries, thus thou must do it, if thou have it. And that which rather thou dost fear to do, then wish it must should be undone. Hie thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in thine ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue, all that impedes thee from the golden round, which fate and mis metaphysical aid doth seem to have thee crowned withal. What is your tidings? The king comes here tonight. Thou art mad to say it? Is not thy master with him? Who, weren't so, would have informed for preparation? So please you, it is true. Our thane is coming. One of my fellows had the speed of him, who almost dead for breath, had scarcely more than would make up his message. Give him tending. He brings great news. The raven himself is hoarse, that croaks the fatal entrance of Duncan under my battlements. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. Make thick my blood, stop up the access and passage to remorse, that no compunctious visitings of nature shake my fell purpose, nor keep peace between the effects in it. Come to my woman's breast and take my milk for gall, you murdering ministers. Wherever in your sightless substances you wait on nature's mischief, come, thick night, and pall me, pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes, nor heaven peep through the blanket of the dark to cry, hold, hold. Great glamis worthy cotter, greater than both, by the all hail hereafter. Thy letters have transported me beyond this ignorant present, and I feel now the future in the instant. My dearest love, Duncan comes here tonight. And when goes hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never shall the sun that morrow see. Your face, my vein, is a book where men may read strange matters to beguile the time. Look like the time, bear welcome in your eye. Your hand, your tongue, look like the innocent flower, but be the servant under it. He that's coming must be provided for, and you shall put this night's great business into my dispatch, which shall to all our nights and days to come give solely sovereign sway and masterdom. We will speak further. Only look up clear, to alter favor ever is the fear. Leave all the rest to me.